Welcome back, YouTubers, and thank you once again for joining us. This is Inland Northwest Native News. I'm your host, Jeff Ferguson, and this is Episode 8. Uh, we're happy that you could be here. If uh, this is your first time joining us, uh, be sure to check out the Facebook page. Be sure to follow us on Twitter. If you'd like to be updated on uh, the videos that we're going to be doing, uh, right now we're doing about one episode a week. Uh, be sure to uh, like and subscribe. The subscribe button is the red button in your right-hand corner of your screen. If you click that, there will be a little bell that comes up. If you click on that bell, it'll alert you every time uh, we have a new episode. As I mentioned before, we are on episode eight. Uh, be sure to go back and check out some of the newer uh, episodes that we've had. We've also had some uh, midweek updates on some very important issues uh, that affect us here in the inland northwest uh, corner of Indian country. Um, if you are unfamiliar with what we're doing here, we are covering news and events for 11 tribes of the Inland Northwest with all the native communities uh, within them. We're based in Spokane, Washington, and we're going to be hitting uh, the Powwow Trail. We're also checking out some of the relay races. We're going to uh, head over to the OMAC Stampede for the suicide race again this year. Uh, we're also doing uh, a lot of the uh, other events throughout the year. We've got uh, some exciting announcements coming up uh, this week. So on this episode, we have uh, highlights from 100 64th annual Treaty Day uh, celebration down on the Yakima Res. Or, or we have highlights from the parade with an interview uh, with Pollyanna Little Bull, who's with the uh, Yakima Tribal Traffic Safety. She got to talk to us a little bit about what's going on down there. We also have uh, highlights from the Culture Center, and we were able to catch up with Native American hip-hop artist Lakota uh, Frank Wong, and he gave us an interview, and we caught up with uh, him and, and got uh, some highlights from his presentation and some of the music that he did. Uh, we also were able to catch up with some of the, the uh, little dancers down at the Tiny Top mini powwow they had going on there they had a nice uh, salmon uh, lunch they provided for everybody we also have highlights from the uh, 164th annual uh, treaty day powwow in white swan and we're also able to get uh, an interview with adam unikowski the attorney that fought uh, for the yakima treaty rights in washington dc he argued the case back in dc uh, washington state licensing v cougar den which was the one that helped preserve uh, the treaty rights that we talked about with Professor and Attorney Margot Hill. Uh, she covered that case earlier in an early episode, and she's got a great interview coming up with him. Uh, we we're also to get, uh, able to get some great highlights uh, from from the powwow there and, and talk to a few other people. So uh, be sure to check that out. So while we're down there at, at the uh, powwow in White Swan, we're able to uh, shoot a bunch of the uh, dance categories, and so there'll be a link to the dance videos from the White Swan powwow uh, in the description section below so be sure to check that out if you have any questions or comments be sure to leave them in the comment section below again we'll be shooting another episode uh, especially coming up uh, for hoop fest so if you have any hoop fest teams that you want us to check out while we're down there uh, be sure to uh, message us those or you can put them in the comment section if you'd like uh, give you some of the announcements that we got coming up the, the native project here in Spokane they announced their youth program coming up it's got 60 spots it cost you 40 40 a, a person and it, it's going on from uh, July 8th to August 7th Second, they'll be doing academic prep, hands-on learning, uh, sports activities, field trips, and uh, swimming, uh, among other things. You, you be sure to uh, uh, get in quick with that one because I know they fill up every year. All right, so coming up uh, June 20th to the 30th down on the Warm Springs Res, we've got the Payumsha Celebration. It's the Treaty Days powwow. Uh, they have an endurance horse race. They have a parade, a rodeo, a stick game, a uh, fun run, boxing. that would be kind of fun. Uh, softball and a Superman slash Superwoman challenge. So that looks pretty exciting. Uh, this is actually the 50th annual Payumsha Rodeo and it will be sanctioned. Uh, they'll have bareback and saddle bronc, uh, sheep, calf, and cow riding and all the different categories. So that should be a good time. Again, that's June 28th uh, to the 30th down on the Warm Springs Res. Uh, coming up on the Kalispell Res uh, up in Usk, Washington, the 44th annual uh, Kalispell Powwow. That was announced. It'll be uh, August 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. If you've never been out there, it's one of the most beautiful powwow grounds in all of the Inland Northwest. Uh, they'll have their buffalo run and their uh, buffalo feed on Saturday. Uh, they'll have a horsetail special. They got $31,000 in, in drum money uh, uh, up for grabs. Uh, be sure to head out there if you got a drum, man. $31,000 will bring out some good singers. Uh, it should make for some good dancing. 
Um, again, they'll have their softball tournament uh, with the stick game uh, tournament on Saturday and a youth stick game tournament on Sunday. Uh, so again, the 44th annual Kalispell uh, powwow coming up. Uh, I will also leave links uh, to this powwow and Payumsha, the rodeo and the celebration for Treaty Day. I'll leave that in the description section below. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to, to leave them in the comment section. Uh, if you have any uh, friends that you might be interested, be sure to send them our way. Be sure to have them like and subscribe, especially if you have any uh, loved ones that live uh, beyond the Inland Northwest, maybe have somebody living back east or going to school uh, down at UNLV or something along that lines. Uh, be sure to send them our link so they can keep up with some of the events that are coming up in the Inland Northwest. We also have the canoe journey coming up, but they're, this year they're dropping in uh, the June 14th at 9 a.m. down at the Crescent Bay uh, at Cooley Dam. Uh, all the canoes will be landing at uh, Kettle Falls on uh, June 22nd for the salmon ceremony. Uh, so be sure to check that if, uh, and be sure to check that out. That's uh, the ceremony that uh, the film United by Water uh, was based on. I'll leave links to the uh, Columbia Canoe Journey information in the uh, description section below. So. That's all the announcements. Uh, we're just trying to keep it brief this week because we got a lot of content from the 164th annual Treaty Day, Day celebration down on the Yakima Res. Uh, so uh, once again, thank you for joining us. Again, like and subscribe if you'd like to, to check out what we got coming up and want to be notified. If you have any questions or comments, feel them, uh, free to leave them in the section below. Be sure to check out our Facebook page. Be sure to uh, follow us on Twitter. And, and again, be sure to tell your friends and family. You know, it's truly an honor to be able to be here uh, providing this content for you guys. But uh, uh, we, we'd love to hear your feedback. If you have any comments on any old uh, uh, episodes that we did, or if you, there's something that you'd like featured uh, in new episodes, if you have an elder or an artist or academic or athlete or somebody special here in the Inland Northwest in our little quarter of Indian country that you think uh, uh, we should be uh, talking about or interviewing or, or, or featuring, uh, be sure to let us know. Uh, there were some great things that, that have been happening around here. It is truly, again, a great uh, day to be Indigenous. Uh, I thank you once again again for joining us um be sure to check out some of the past episodes if you haven't been able to check that out uh there'll be links to the powwow uh dance videos uh there's also uh links to other uh powwow dance videos uh from uh powwow throughout the inland northwest that'll be included in the links uh in the com or in the description section below so uh once again thank you for joining us uh without further ado let's get to the 164th annual treaty day celebration down on the yakima res thank you So Treaty Days originally was a 10-day celebration and our parade kind of kicks off the whole event and so today is the parade day for to kind of kick off all the events for Yakima Nation Treaty Days. There'll be powwow, rodeo, uh, softball tournaments, golf tournaments, um, you name it. There's all kinds of waluksha and stick game, you name it. All right, fry bread for miles. Yeah, fry bread for miles. Okay. <laughs> all right. So um, you have uh, talk, talk to me a little bit about. Oh, it looks like they're going to get going. A little bit about uh, the uh, transportation out here. What what has the transportation been like? I know there's a big movement out here. You guys have been doing all sorts of stuff. Yeah. So lately, um, we've tried to do more on traffic safety because the fatalities and serious injury crashes. And so we just did a presentation to Tribal Council yesterday about the, all the data that we found and the recommendations that we have suggested to improve traffic safety, especially at intersections. Um, that isn't our only focus. We also work on pedestrian. We're gonna apply for a grant. We got the go ahead from Tribal Council to apply for that grant for a possible pedestrian corridor from Union Gap to Toppenish and then Toppenish to White Swan, Toppenish to Zillow and Toppenish to Mapton. So we're going to start the planning phases for that. We've already had multiple meetings, but um, that's one of the goals is pedestrian safety and then traffic safety. We're looking at um, daytime running lights and reducing speed zones so that they're slower um, and working better with like Washington Department of Transportation and, and the Sheriff's Department. <laughs> that's Porsche. <laughs> So we're just, we're, we're doing, making a lot of efforts, like here we're doing dual language signage for Sahaptan language and English, and trying to do education campaigns about 
uh, traffic safety, wearing your seatbelt, think safety, slow down, and then when you're a pedestrian, um, stop, look, listen before you cross. Well, thank you so much. Thanks. I appreciate it. It's nice to meet you. Yeah.
Judges number 83, Rock Creek Warrior. Mosey Wesley, Rock Creek Warrior. Royal Wa Walsey, Mosey Walsey. Hey, throw me a fish. Throw me a fish. You got a fish? Throw me a fish. All right. You guys ran over somebody's net. There's a dragon in somebody's net there now. Vehicle is number 90, 90, Molly. Olivia Lee, Jr. Miss Rock Creek, and Molly David, Little Miss Rock Creek, 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 don't argue with me because I know because I eat candy and I know it. You, you got the five second rule. I like your basket hat. Say thank you. It's hey. very cool. Say thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's for the kids. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Hi! Hi! 
here at uh, Treaty Days on the Yakima Res uh, and Top Finish at the uh, Yakima uh, Heritage Center with uh, uh, Frank Walt. Frank's going to be performing here uh, very shortly. Uh, Frank, can you tell us a little bit about uh, how you got started, uh, where, where you're from, and, and uh, maybe a little bit about what's going on right now with you? Yeah, for sure. Well, um, first off, I'm Sichungu Lakota. I come from the Rosebud Reservation in South Central South Dakota, born and raised. And, um, you know, I shared a lot of my story of how I got started in music yesterday with the kids. But it essentially started when I was about seven years old. I, I started playing piano, teaching myself to play piano. And I, I found music and started playing music as an act of survival. You know, I grew up in a, a household that had a lot of issues and I grew up in a community that had a lot of issues. So music was a healthy place for me to escape and, and something for me to focus on. So I started making and playing music and writing songs to just heal and survive and I'm still going. All right. So um, how many CDs you got out now? So I have uh, four albums out, a few with groups, a few solo. I'm working on a new album I plan on putting out this, this summer. And also I have an acoustic album in the works with a native collective I perform with. So I'm, I'm old, I say CDs. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, they're all albums and they're all digital now, so that's kind of crazy. Um, so can you tell me a little bit about what you're going to be doing today? Yeah, for sure. Well, today I'm going to be doing a concert here at the theater for the tribe, um, for the community, just sharing some of my songs and music. But um, my performance is a lot like uh, the show I used to watch called VH1 Storytellers, where the artists really like tell the stories of where the songs came from. Mm -hmm. And I kind of do that because, I mean, that's how it is in our cultures. You know, when someone shares a song, they usually tell where that song came from or what the song means. So I just like to do that with my music, too. So there'll be a lot of storytelling and a lot of, a lot of good music. All right. That's great. You know, we used to, uh, to, to play some of your music on the radio um, back in Spokane, and, and we had a lot of good response from, from uh, the youth. What, uh, what, what's kind of kept you going all this time? Honestly, it's, it's the passion. You know, like I said, uh, music is my passion. It's like a, something that I have to do every day. It's a part of me, and I'll, I would be playing music whether people were paying attention or not, you know. So I'm going to be doing it till the day I die. Just as long as I could keep making a living out of it, it'll be good. So um, number one, the passion. But like I said, um, you know, the elders back home, my grandma, um, people that, that – and still a lot of values in me that, that carry me through my life taught me to use my gifts to help the people I care about and to help my community. And I care about Native people and I care about our health and I want us to be happy and I want us to be well. So I'm just going to keep using my music to try to make that happen. Yeah. So how old are you now? I'm uh, 29. All right. Wow, well, you're looking good for 29, <laughs> man. That's great. Yeah. So um, if you had one message that you'd want to share with the Native youth out mm -hmm. there, what would it be? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I always, always tell Native kids, um, there's a lot of things I could share with you, but at the core of it all, I think my message is that you deserve to be happy, you deserve to be healthy, you deserve to be respected, and you're worthy of love. All right. That's great, man. Um, yeah, that's a pretty, pretty good interview. Is there anything else that you'd like to add? Um, no, just that I'm happy to be out in this area, you know, Spokane and Yakima area were one of the first places outside of my res that was playing my music actually like almost a decade ago. So this, 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 this area out here is near and dear to my heart, so it's awesome to come out here and perform. All right. Well, I guess maybe I should ask you where you're headed next. Um, well, actually, I, I've been on the road heavy. This is my last gig for... Um, 
for about most of the summer, I'm gonna take two months off and uh, finish a new album. So uh, I've been I've been everywhere this last. Uh, I'm trying to remember. I went to uh, South Dakota. I went to North Dakota. I've been to New York. I, it's all a blur. But I'm gonna be uh, taking a break. But my next gig will be on the Pine Ridge Res in August. All right. Yeah. And so, um, like I said, I, I'm Sichungu Lakota. I also go by Frank Juan. And I'm really super super excited to be here on the. Uh, you know, in Yakima territory, sharing some of my songs and music with you all. We had a great time yesterday with the youth. This place was, you're going to hear a lot about who I am and where I come from, but this place was one of the first places that was playing my music outside of my home reservation. So um, I'm really happy to be here because this place is, like I said, special in my heart. It's one of the first places outside of my, my home that was playing my music and showing me support. And now, you know, my music's all over the place, but, but this place is still special to me. And, Ten years later, my music brought me here to, to, to share some of it with you all. And I made this song because I was taught that um, that act of Wokik Suye, that act of remembering who we are and where we come from, who came before us, all the things that had to happen for us to be here in this, this theater here today, it's important to remember those things because it keeps you grounded and it keeps you rooted as a person and as a human. And if you don't know who you are or where you come from, you're going to get upgrounded and uprooted and, and you'll believe anything. So I think as Native people especially, we come from such strong, rich histories and cultures, it's, in, it's important for us to remember, even if sometimes that remembrance is painful, you know. So this is Wokik Suye. As, as you might have heard in that song, um, it, it was quite a journey for me to um, even be able to make music at home, you know, at the time when I was starting out, but it took most of my life for me to even believe in myself or my music. As I shared yesterday with the kids, you know, I shared a lot of my personal story and how even though I love my family to death, I come from a really big family on, on back home. My mom had seven sisters and three brothers, and they all had kids, and we all grew up together in the same community, we're all 20-some, 30-some of my cousins, like my brothers and sisters. You know, it was a blessing to have a big family, but it also can be a curse sometimes. Um, and, and my family had a lot, of, uh, a lot of trauma, a lot of pain, a lot of hurt, a lot of violence, and you know, I, I, was, uh, I was made to believe that I wasn't really worth anything by some people in my family, and so I believed that for most of my life. And I started making music, like I said, as an escape. And I never even told anyone about my music until I was in my 20s. I was writing songs for several years. Um, I didn't even show people. I just did it because it made me feel good. And so, you know, I encourage, I encourage all the kids, but I encourage anybody to find that thing you love to do and do it no matter what. You know, even if, even if it seems like a crazy dream, because people told me I would, never, I would never make it with my music. And I say that not to impress you all, but to inspire you, you know, because I was never the best, but I worked really hard, like I said. I, I worked at this every single day. I'm gonna tell you all a kind of crazy theory I have as a Lakota person. You know, you all know the, the Wounded Knee Massacre where you know we defeated General Custer and captured the US flag and defeated him in battle, the Lakota tribe. Um, that was one of the only times in the whole history of the world the US government has ever been defeated in battle and had their flag captured. But we did that, native people. And I think it's because our, 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 our ceremonies gave us strength. Because two years after that, the U.S. government outlawed our ceremonies and made them illegal. And I don't think that's a coincidence. I don't think that's a coincidence that they saw themselves losing in battle and then took away the things that gave us strength and made it illegal. You see, these tactics were on purpose to make us weak so they could 
try to commit genocide on us. And so he gave us this phrase and he said, you guys are artists, take it all around wherever you go and say it to everyone you love, say it to the people you meet um, and, and, and speak our language everywhere you go. And so um, whenever I raise my hand up in this song, I need you guys to say the word Oyate. I'm gonna say Wana we Chichaga. One, two, three, four. Oh yeah. One now we chichaga, one now we chichaga. One more time. Oh yeah. We go one now we chichaga, one now we chichaga, one now. One more time. Oh yeah. Oh man, that's about three or four. These two up here are holding it down for everybody. They're the loudest ones. Let's see if we can get up to a seven or eight. It's like, oh yeah, say, I'll count us in. Let's go. Oh, yeah. One now we chichaga, one now we chichaga, two more times. One now we chichaga, one now we chichaga, one more time. One now we chichaga, one now we chichaga, one now we chichaga. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Give yourselves a hand, give yourselves a hand. You guys kind of sounded like some Lakotas, even. You had the pronunciation right. Inland Northwest Native News. Like and subscribe. All right, man. Thank you so much. Might be. Uh, all the fish heads are gone. So we do have some more cake up here, right in front of the announcer stand. Okay, so we're going to get started with the awards for the parade participants. And again, if you do have uh, children, uh, did, 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 did we find? We have a winner. We have a winner. Mom and Dad were found, and he's crying. They're uh, our gifts. They're their bag, and uh, what do they have in the bags? They're charging me what they got in the bags. We have some. They have. Uh, PlayStation 4s and, uh, and Nintendo Switches and uh, Four and under, we're going to give you a song and then we're going to ask you to line up and uh, if you have your bracelet, you're registered and you get a, uh, yeah, I'll go, a okay. bag, a gift I'll go. bag.
this issue that we fought here in the Supreme Court for was our very right. Our right to trade, our right to travel, our right to go from place to place. Washington State said some questions that we have that right. That's what this battle is all about. And this battle has been going on. I've been fighting this for almost 40 years for one case to another. Finally, he reached the United States Supreme Court, and we won at that place. This man here, he's from Washington, D.C., is Adam Minkowski, from a firm called Jenner and Bob. This whole team of attorneys that we have that are here, that are here, are the people that fought for this case. Adam is the one that argued for the Supreme Court. We reached out to him because he's from Washington, D.C. He's from that system, what I call the good old boy system back there. So we felt that we needed somebody who knew how that system worked. So we reached out to him and he, he did, did the argument for us. Um, we brought him out here, we got the council, we met some other people here. And after that trip, we felt that he had a feeling for us as a people. So when he argued this case before the court, it wasn't just an attorney arguing the law. It was a man caring about us as a It is a great pleasure and honor to visit with Mr. Unikowski. Adam was the individual that argued the Cougar Den case clear up to the Supreme Court. Um, the Yakima Nation just had an honor dance for Adam, and we wanted to visit with Adam a little bit about the Cougar Den case. Adam, can you tell us, um, now that you've been to the Supreme Court and you're here on the Yakima Nation uh, traditional homelands, how does that feel? Uh, incredible. Uh, so I, 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 I didn't realize I'd be honored in this way. And I can't, it was an incredible honor. I can't believe it still. I still have goosebumps. So, wow, that was, that was an amazing uh, experience. And I, I feel so lucky to be here and so happy to be here. Uh, so just in the uh, powwow arena, we held an honor dance for um, Adam. And the, the tribe circled around him. And they, they blanketed him and honored him for arguing the Cougar Den case. Um, so, Adam, it was a very difficult case, and with this current Supreme Court, uh, what were your thoughts going in, um, and um, what were some of your strategies in arguing before the Supreme Court? I, I always felt we had a strong argument. I mean, when you looked at the, the, the text and especially the history of the treaty, uh, I think we had a very strong case that uh, what, what Mr. Ramsey and his company were doing, which was bringing fuel. Uh, to the reservation, uh, uh, to, to market, from market and to market, was uh, exactly the rights that the Yakimas had reserved for themselves in 1855, and therefore he had the right to do it without paying a tax. That was our argument. And it's true that, you know, it's, it's a tough court, and, you know, there's been some tough losses over the years, but I always felt that uh, we, had a, we had a very powerful argument based on the history of the treaty, uh, and I was, I was very excited uh, that, our, that the, our position was vindicated, very excited. So the Yakima tribe and the Yakima Nation, they are very traditional people and they uh, hold strongly to the 1855 treaty. 
in that treaty, they specifically negotiated a number of rights, including um, the right to hunt and fish in their traditional territories. And then there's this very unique right. Uh, there were only two other tribes that I know of um, that negotiated this right to mobility. Um, and I, I've read a lot about it, but can you tell us a little bit about how important that right to mobility, the right to travel and trade is for the Yakima people? Absolutely. So yes, it's uh, actually it's the only Washington tribe to have a right to travel. The other tribes are, are outside of Washington. And it was negotiated uh, by, uh, because travel and travel for purposes of trade was extremely important to the Yakimas at the time. There's an extraordinary historical record that the Yakimas traveled extensively to trade. That was a crucial part of their culture that they, they needed to reserve for themselves as a condition of the treaty. And uh, this was the first time the Supreme Court has interpreted the right to travel, despite the treaty having signed over a century ago. And what we had to explain was that this was a very important right. It was crucial to Yakima culture then and now. And what that means is that if, if the right was rever reserved, and if Cougar Den in this case, but any, any Yakima, not just Cougar Den, but in this case Cougar Den was exercising the rights that had been reserved, it could do it without incurring a tax obligation to the state. That's the right that was reserved and that's the right they still held today. And by connecting the historical practices of the Yakimas to what Cougar Den in this case was doing today, we persuaded the Supreme Court that he was exercising a treaty right and therefore couldn't be taxed for doing that. So historically, the Yakimas traveled clear uh, to Western Washington. They they traveled whether it was shells and and um, items from the West Side clear into Montana. Um, when you were research, researching the case and and thinking about uh, mobility, um, did you realize that how much it would mean to tribes across the nation a, as well as to the Yakima Nation? Well, I, I mean, I, I certainly coming here, I understand it probably better than I did before, I would say. Uh, I, I do know that this is a very important case for, for Yakima Nation and uh, for other tribes as well. But uh, I guess being here, it's very different from, from, from you know, it's, it's very unique being here and, and, see, and seeing, being part of this incredible ceremony. It, it, it brings it home in a way that I, I, I couldn't have understood if I wasn't here. Since the 1980s, and we had the U.S. v. Montana case, um, there were many cases that were ruled against uh, tribes, tribal rights, and not recognizing uh, basic federal Indian law principles, canons of construction. The canons of construction, of course, require um, uh, judges to read the law in a light uh, favorable to the tribes because we were at such a disadvantage in negotiating the treaties. Um, and so. How um, how good does it, does it feel to know that the Supreme Court actually read um, the, the case law and read the facts and looked back at the historical documents to understand the, the, the travel and the mobility of the Yakima people and um, how much the, the right to travel is to the, the Yakima nation? It, it, it's very gratifying, as you say, you know, basic treaty principles that treaties have to be construed in favor of, of the tribe and ambiguities have to be construed in favor of the tribe and in the recognition that the treaties have to be interpreted the way the tribes would have understood it, not the way some, some lawyer on the other side tries to put a gloss on it, you know, many, many years later. Uh, th those principles are really recognized in this case and I'm just very happy the Supreme Court really took our argument seriously and, and really thought about what we had to say. You know, we were against both the state as well as the Justice Department. But, uh, you know, we, we put forward our position, our contrary view, and I, I guess I feel very gratified that they, they read what we had to say and they considered it and they applied these traditional treaty canons. And I think that when you look at the history of the treaty, uh, we were right. I, I always felt we were right. It's just a matter of persuading them that we were right. And it, it worked out. So it, it certainly was, was very exciting. So one of the issues with uh, tribes and economic development, as you can see, is geography. We are, are clear out in, in sometimes lands that are hard to develop. We have high unemployment rates, and so we depend on our treaty rights or these opportunities for economic development um, because we, our communities are in a disadvantaged location geography, geography, you know, uh, uh, by geography. And um, so it's imp so important that lawyers like yourself 
and true warriors for Indian country are fighting for our right to trade and have economic development. Um, in in uh, arguing for this case be before the Supreme Court, did you realize um, that it would be a win for Indian country across um, the United States? Well, I, I hoped so. I mean, I don't like to predict because, you know, it, it's, it's much easier to just hope for the best than to predict something. You know, I mean, at the argument, some, some of the justices were with us and, and some seemed not to be. Uh, but so I, I was nervous. I spent months just being nervous. <laughs> uh, and every day I was nervous that today would be the day where it would come out. And I was on cloud nine or, you know, maybe cloud, cloud 9,000 when, uh, when finally it, it, it worked out. So I, I understand that the important, and in fact, you know, historically the purpose of this right to travel was precisely economic development and, and, and the ability to participate in the economy. The, the, the people who negotiated this treaty understood that if they were living on a reservation, they needed to leave the reservation to trade. And that is why they negotiated this crucial right to travel. And that is exactly what Cougar Den, in this case, was doing and vindicating. And so there's a direct link between the promise that was negotiated in 1855 and the case that was before the court. And I, I think the court was able to see that. So I, I am not a Yakima tribal member. I am a Spokane tribal citizen. But I just want to say thank you um, as, as a tribal member, as a tribal attorney and tribal court judge. We appreciate folks out there that are making the arguments for Indian country. And I hope why you're here on the Yakima Nation uh, lands and their homeland, that you look at these little young people and you realize that you've helped provide opportunity for their community. So I thank you very much, Adam. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with uh, Indian country? Just said the, the hospitality I've gotten has been unbelievable. This has been an, such a fantastic experience and I feel so lucky to have come out here. So. Thank <laughs> you.